All right, the first thing I do is I figure out which side is the prettiest and I make sure that it's facing down because I want it to be the front of the cornhole board. Next thing I do is I take a two by four that's eight feet long and I cut it in half and that makes this piece and this piece and I do it twice for both pieces. And then the distance between this two by four and this two by four is 21 inches. So I'm gonna cut four pieces that are 21 inches long for the top and the bottom of each cornhole. Okay, now you can see that I have my 21 inch pieces cut. And so now the frame is ready to be put together with two and a half inch wood screws. So just to review, the piece of plywood is 48 inches long by 24 inches wide. The two by four on the side is 48 inches long and then the two befores at the top and the bottom are 21 inches long. The first thing I do when I put the boards on the frame is I put the 48 inch two by four, I clamp it to the table, and then I'm gonna drill some holes. I'm gonna drill holes in the top and put my screws in. I'll, put, I'll do four down the side. and that's Okay, just a little tip. When I'm drilling my holes, I'll use a, I don't have a countersink bit, so I'll use a bit like this, but I'll spin it backwards so that it doesn't take a whole lot of wood off so that when I put my screw in, I can countersink it and then fill it with wood putty. Okay, this is why I put the long pieces to the face first. Now my cross piece is just a hair too big. So I'll take it out and I'll take just a sliver off on the miter saw and then it'll work perfectly. And that way I don't have anything overhanging right here. If I had done that the other way around, then I would have just a little bit overhanging right there. Now I'm gonna drill my six inch hole. I measure nine inches down and 12 inches from the side and that's where I'm gonna put my pilot hole. And then I'll flip the board over to actually use the hole saw to drill the six inch hole. This is the part that you have to be the most careful. I use the six inch hole saw. Now I have used a jigsaw to use it, but the hole was not quite this perfect. I've learned to flip the board upside down so that if the hole saw jumps off, it won't make, make a mess of the front of the board. Also, these edges protect you. I like to put it down on the floor so that my it's easier to hold the saw even. This is how you figure out where to put the leg on the cornhole board. First, I have an extra two by four. That's the distance from the leg to the end of the board. The leg is 16 inches long. I found the distance halfway of this leg and then halfway of this two by four only, not the plywood, just the two by four. And I drew a line marking the halfway points of both. And now I'm gonna drill a hole straight through both. I'll clamp it first and drill a hole straight through both for the carriage bolt. You trim off each corner of the leg so that it will lay down nicely inside the cornhole board. The leg is attached to the cornhole board using a carriage bolt. This one's four and a half inches. It could probably be a little bit smaller. And on the inside is a washer and a wing nut. Now I'm gonna cut the leg. The height of the cornhole board is supposed to be 12 inches from the ground. So what I've done is I propped it on a paint can and I've got a carpenter's pencil. I put it over to the edge and lean it off the edge. And now I'm gonna mark the, the leg with a carpenter's pencil. And then I'll take the leg off, cut it with a miter saw, and it should be perfect. I filled all the holes with wood filler. Now I have used this kind in a tube before, but I prefer to use this little paste and I use a putty knife. So I filled in all the, the screw holes and then I sanded it down, wiped it off with a tack cloth, 
and now I'm ready to prime and paint it. This is an Alabama cornhole set, so I'm gonna paint the whole thing white to begin with. Now I've gotten everything put together and sanded, so now I'm painting. The middle part's gonna stay white. The outside part is going to be red, and when you paint red, it helps to prime it gray so that you only have to use a couple of coats. Without painting it gray, it takes about four coats of the red to cover the board. So here is the finished cornhole board. I highly recommend when you're taping off and painting, make sure you get the edge lock tape. It makes all the difference. Now I'm gonna show you how to put on a vinyl decal on your cornhole board. The back side is a white piece of glossy paper like this. And on the front, there is a clear piece of plastic like this. I centered the decal and I taped down the edge and I'm gonna flip the decal over. And the first thing I'm gonna do is peel off this white backing. I have the decal flipped over and I'm gonna take a roller and roll any bubbles out. I'm also gonna take a credit card to make sure that the decal adheres to the wood before I try to peel off the clear plastic front. This next part requires a lot of patience. You start in the corner and you gently and slowly pull the plastic off of the face of the decal. You wanna make sure the little pieces that you're very, very gentle with those areas. If it, the decal starts to come up, try starting from the other corner. I was pulling the plastic off and this little part of the A wanted to come up with the white plastic. So I just took my card and I went over it really, really good. And now I'm gonna try very gently. If any part that comes up like that, that's what I do. Next, I'm gonna take my hair dryer and I'm gonna heat the decal and then I will roll over it again. Here is the finished decal. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. It almost looks as if it's painted on. The last thing I'm gonna do is spray it with urethane. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go left to right. I'm gonna hold my finger down about 12 inches from the board. I'm gonna spray it across, lift my finger up, start back on the left, spray it across again, trying to prevent any drips. I have two seven inch squares. My mama put that nice A on that one for me. So what I'll do is flip, these are the outsides of the bag, so I'll flip outside to outside and line it up. I'm gonna sew around the edges twice and leave about an inch opening to put the coin in. I forgot to tell you before, I am using broadcloth or you can use outdoor cloth. Now I will cut off the excess and use the one inch hole that I left to flip the bag right side out. So here's what it looks like. I gently used my scissors on the inside to make sure all of the corners were popped out. And now I'm gonna use two cups of corn and fill the bag up. This is the easiest way I have found to get the corn in the bag is to put a funnel in the one inch corner and then pour the corn, the two cups of corn in the funnel. The last step is to turn this one inch hole under and sew it shut. For the one inch hole, I got the thread the same color as the bags. This is Coates and Clark, dual duty, all purpose thread.